My name is Matt Roberts. I uh, started in uh, gun making about 12 years ago. Before that, I went to uh, gunsmithing school in Yavapai College, which is in uh, Prescott, Arizona. My initial interest in gun making started from uh, my time living in Alaska. I had some uh, good friends that were gunsmiths and uh, avid outdoorsmen, and that's uh, something that I was really interested in. So, uh, yeah, went to gunsmithing school, Arizona and then came back here and started the business. All right, uh, we have a barrel in the lathe right now and we're going to thread, chamber, and crown it, which means we're going to fit it to the action and we're going to cut the portion of the internal part of the barrel where the cartridge goes. We've already set this barrel up, um, indicated off a board line um, with a range rod, which is what this is here. Um, and this has a tight fitting pilot that I'm able to move in and out of the bore and run an indicator on um, to know that it's running perfectly true. So at this point, I'm going to cut it down to one inch because it's going into a, a Winchester Model 70, which is a one inch 16 thread. So I'm going to cut this section down to one inch and then we're going to thread it 16 uh, thread per inch. I'm now changing the tool over to a uh, cutting tool, which is a, uh, looks like that's a 60 degree cutting tool, and that's going to uh, allow us to put the threads into the shank. So when cutting the threads, it's important to have the compound rest set at 60 degrees, and then it's important to line the tool up so that it is 60 degrees from the outside of that shank. And uh, to that, just a little uh, tool here that allows me to line up that cutting tool against the side of the barrel there. On this first pass, I'm just gonna go up till I start to make a mark. I'm gonna set my zero. So at this point, I'm just uh, double checking that I am getting 16 threads per inch with my thread pitch gauge, which I am meaning everything's working well, and then I can start the threading process. So at this point our threads are cut. Um, from here um, we would normally then go and chamber the barrel or actually cut the, the face to a cone breech, then chamber the barrel. Well, that takes a couple hours, so we're going to skip that. Alright, uh, right now we're in the middle of inletting a stock. We're pretty far along on the inletting process, so we're sort of fine scraping it in at this point. Um, when I uh, machine them on my uh, duplicator out there, I leave quite a bit of material, like 40, 50 thou, and do the rest by hand. That way there's, it's a nice tight fit. Um, to inlet, I'm using a, a Prussian blue, which is basically a greasy blue paste. And I'm just painting that on the metalwork. In the stock, it leaves behind a residue, so I know what material to remove. This barrel's a half octagon, half round, barrel so it's uh, the inletting is a little trickier than a, just a round barrel because you have the straight sides. I get it nice and snug in the rear so I know it's not bouncing around. So it's going to be enough to be behind what needs to go away. It's all of these marks here, all the, those blue marks. Um, there's some small ones along the barrel. So that's showing all the high spots. That, that's what needs to, needs to go away. So when, when I get this close, um, I go from using gouges and chisels to scrapers, because it's, it's quite close. Um, so you really don't need to remove a lot of material at this point. On a Mauser, it leaves these scallops behind that I'm scraping right now. And it's nice with good inletting to make sure those are good and defined. All 
When I cut this on the bandsaw, I usually leave about a quarter inch extra. That way, if everything's not perfectly lined up when it goes on the duplicator, it'll still leave me enough material. When you're laying out a stock like this, it's important to make sure that you have enough material for the cheek piece on this side so you offset um, it in the, the stock you're going to cut. So this is our uh, my duplicating machine. Um, in it, I'm able to take a pattern stock that I bed the barrel action um, in and cut uh, my blank in the same pattern. So um, it turns like this, so you're able to go all the way around the stock. Um, and they stay together. And you can uh, operate the stylus and router by hand. So on this side, the side with the stylus, this traces the pattern stock. And on this side with the router, cuts the uh, blank. So um, to set the offset, when I uh, do my first initial pass, I keep it 125 thou off the stock. So that's what I'm doing at this point is getting that set correctly. I have all different size and shapes of stylus and cutters. So I'm able to do the round or the fine inletting and the recoil lug area um, when we get closer to the finished product. We use all types of tools in gun making from uh, a big milling machine that we showed you earlier, a lathe. Um, these uh, allow me to make custom parts, custom sights, uh, custom bottom metal, custom scope mounts. Um, from there, the lathe is uh, used for all sorts of barrel work, um, uh, whether it's uh, fitting the uh, barrel to the action or truing the action. Uh, which just means making all the uh, surfaces on it true to bore line. So oftentimes in the factory, uh, they don't come out true to bore line. So what you get with a custom gun maker is somebody who's going to go through and make sure everything's precise. So the, the rifle's not only going to look good, but it's also going to shoot straight. All right, so right now we're in the process of checkering a stock. I've already laid out the major lines um, that we're going to work off of. So um, the outline, uh, the back of the pattern here is cut in. And then the pattern, this is a point pattern, which means that these two lines here determine everything I'm doing within this pattern. So those lines are now cut and I'm working off of them. To do that, I'm using a, it's a 24 lines per inch uh, cutter here. And once I have my master lines in, I can then work off of them and, and continue working the pattern over. So um, it's a tedious process that lasts uh, I usually have about three days into a checkering job. The checkering cradle allows me to continue to uh, move the stock around as I work, but it also keeps the stock very rigid. So uh, these lines would continue all the way that way and all the way this way, and then I would work this line this way and this way. Yeah, you can see the diamonds there. Um, once the pattern is completely filled in, um, going both directions, then I, I start working it down um, with at first a 60 degree cutter and then a 90 degree cutter and until we have sharp pointed checkering. A lot of work is done with hand tools. So um, earlier we showed you uh, the duplicator, which is a, a machine that I can rough a stock in. So that allows me to remove a lot of material quickly. Um, but I leave a, a considerable amount of material for hand fitting. Uh, that way everything is tight. Um, everything has uh, the custom look to it. Uh, the hand tools that are used for that, uh, the inletting is done with chisels, gouges, scrapers. 
Um, the uh, shaping is done. I start with a farrier's rasp, which is a very rough uh, tool, uh, down to a coarse, uh, um, kind of a cabinet maker's rasp, um, to files in the end, and then sandpaper with blocks. Uh, that way I can get the real fine detail done.